Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today we're having one of our nice sort of relaxed informal type videos and I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I have purchased and also the lovely things that you kind cavers have sent me to. Just before we get to that, it's time to announce our next stash series video. So basically what's happened is you guys have bought enough stuff from the stash shop and what was previously the cave stash on eBay. We've racked up £50 and you guys get to decide now how that money is spent. So what I would like you to do is go down into the comments and tell me what you would like the money spent on and what sort of video you would like to see with that cash. As before, we will pick out the most popular answers and then we will have a vote on them and the most popular one will become a video. I'm open to everything, all suggestions welcome. Just before you leave your comment, have a read through the ones that are there and if someone else has already made the suggestion that you were going to make, give it a thumbs up and upvote it and that lets me see the most popular ones. Now in previous discussions on the Stash series videos, a lot of you like to know what my thoughts are and my gem recommendation is that we go for the good old uh, I tried to follow a Bob Ross video. I have slowly been squirreling away some oil paints and supplies but I'm not quite there yet. So if that's something you're interested in, let me know in the comments below and as I say, all suggestions are welcome and I'd love your little creative minds to tell me what you would like to see done in a video. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way and hopefully you've stopped by now and made your suggestion, let's get on with the rest of the video. Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and this is uh, one of our haul videos. I just like to explain how these work. Every time I get something in my PO box or something arty that I purchase myself through the mail, I film the unboxing or opening of said item and I save up all those clips and then run them together and when I have enough to make a full video, that's when I put it out. Someone had asked me the question about um, why something was so late in being opened. I think it was a date on a letter or something, so that's why. All my mail goes to a central PO box in my nearest city, which is Dundee, and I have to go and pick my mail up. They do have a forwarding service, but PO boxes are really, really expensive, and I can't afford the postage on top of paying for the actual PO box. So I just go and pick it up periodically, maybe every like two or three weeks, something like that. So I hope that has satisfied your curiosity. I have a rather attractive green envelope here from the Netherlands. And I love the stamps, they're just amazing. And this is quite a funky envelope. I have done this to cover up person's address, which is on the back here. Uh, I think this might be a homemade envelope. I like it's just a very quirky envelope. But either way, I'm quite keen to find out what's in it. I think I have an idea because I seem to remember a vague conversation about paint, but I may I may be wrong. I may be wrong. So I'll just uh, try and open this as gently as possible. When I get mail from anybody, from viewers or whatever, I always try and sort of preserve the envelope and things because I have a big scrapbook called the Big Book of Gratitude and when someone takes the time and the effort and spends the money to send me something, I try and put as many bits and pieces and trinkets and bits and bobs into the big book of gratitude as possible. And it lets me look back and just remind myself how lucky I am to have wonderful viewers like you. So here we go. Ah, yes, this has all been folded up. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. They're, yeah, it's just stuff everywhere. Please come out. I want to see you. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh wow okay right this looks like a, a gnome leading a mouse that's clearly his his riding mouse through the scottish underbrush because these are clearly thistles this is amazing into the woods oh wow this makes me so happy <laughs> Turns out it might not have been too terrible. Gmail has had decided my mail was spam. The paint I would have sent over was green appetite genuine, but as I saw in your June July haul, Julia beat me to it. <laughs> so this was a conversation about my uh, problem, my problem with green paint, uh, well just green art supplies in general and uh, Lioness Feather was going to send me a new green paint that she had but it turns out it's one I've already had. Uh, so instead, instead, 
here's some of my other recent new paint acquisitions. There's still some greens in it. <laughs> so as it turns out, you're not the only one with a green watercolour problem, but also a fun variation of phthalo blue and an interesting pinkish hue. I don't think it's very useful to you in its pure form, but it will make nice mixes. I also include a print of one of my favourite recent paintings on the theme of Into the Woods because I could because I could and because I thought that a gnome with a mouse might, might be something right up your alley. Yes, yes it is. It absolutely is. Anyway, I hope the Scottish summer is treating you and yours well and I'm looking forward to your next video. Regards, Lioness Feather. Thank you ever so much. This has just cheered me up so much. And yes, you're right, this does appeal to me very much. So let's have a wee look at the paint here. Ooh, oh, this is exciting. Right, I'm going to have to get a little scrap of watercolour paper. Oh, it turns out I don't have any scrap watercolour paper left but this is just loose watercolour paper that I keep getting in subscription boxes so that'll do yeah some of you that watch my videos regularly will know that I was a huge fan of the Milan water brush and unfortunately it's had to go in the bin so uh, yeah we're not using that anymore I got it in a subscription box in February and this is August only just August so it's not aged well I'm just using, this is the Jackson's Quill Brush that I showed in the last haul video and I'm enjoying it very much so we'll use that instead with this little pot of water. Potter's Pink, is this is a schminky paint. So let's have a wee go at this. Oh, it's quite delicate. Okay, let's see if we can intensify this a little bit. Potter's Pink. Okay. Hmm, I quite like that. That would be an excellent colour for wildlife in a little illustrative painting because I was thinking like um, squirrel colours. I quite like that. Okay, oh look at the granulation. Oh, so beautiful. Okay, so yeah, I'm up for Potter's Pink. Okay, Sap Green and the Schmincke Horridam. I think I may already have this colour. Oh, that's very, very... Oh no, I don't have this colour. I don't, I definitely don't have this colour. Ooh. That's a very vivid green. Olive green, yellowish. Now this is this is my colour. Oh, would you look at that? That's just delightful. Oh, yes. Now, I don't think I've got... I've got a few schminke paints. I don't think I've got that one, though. Now, these Windsor... These are Windsor and Newton Professional paints down here. I definitely have the Windsor Red. I, I've got Windsor Blue, but I don't think it's the red shade one. Uh, I'm gonna swatch these out anyway. Yeah, this is like a pa -pa 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 Look how oh you! I just love these paints. Yeah, this is like a real pillar box red. Yeah, I am just going to go and see what we've got here. Okay, no, in the in the schminka I have permanent green olive. Yeah, so the Windsor and Newton Professional, this is like my my tin of like a hodgepodge. It's like a mixture of everything. It's not a full set of anything. So I think, yeah, this this is the Windsor blue, but this is the green shade and not the red shade. So this will be interesting. Let's just do a little comparison, shall we? This is the Windsor blue green shade. And the one that Lioness Feather has sent me is the red shade. We'll leave that to dry and we can have a look at them as well. And uh, yeah, I do have the Windsor red as well, I'm sure. Yeah, I've already got a pan of this. Yep. And I really like it because you can you can get like you can make it really really vibrant. Plugging away with it, look at that. Ooh. Anyway, yep. Yeah, so that is uh, that is a lovely set of paints. I want to thank you especially for the greens at Lioness Feather because I am quite taken with those, and uh, I shall definitely be partaking in those at some stage in the not too distant future. <laughs> and thank you for for the the gnome with the the, the mouse mount. That's just absolutely delightful so that is going to go up on possibly the pin board but yeah thank you so much i really appreciate that oh thank you okay let's move on to something else okay this is quite a big box i might have to clear the decks a bit here and i think i zoom out a bit geez uh, I think that this has come from Kate in the east of England. 
the southeast of England at that. Uh, yes, yeah, so Kate basically said that she was having a clear out of her art supplies and she wanted to send me some stuff that she either forgot she had or hadn't used in a while. And I, I wasn't really expecting a box this size. I'm going to be brutally honest here. I was quite shocked when I went to pick this up. Okay, so we've got Kate's letter and I'm going to have to fold over the bottom because her address is down there. Dear Gem, in the box there is a lot of art items which I hope you will enjoy using. The colouring book which is in the box, I hope you enjoy painting the pictures. I think watercolour would be best but it is up to you. At the bottom of the box is some paper that was in Amazon boxes we had just recently. Please let Pip and Jock have the paper to tear up. Oh, that's adorable. Okay, I love your videos on a Sunday and Thursday and I really love hearing about what's happening on the farm and about the animals. With love from Mrs. Kate Richardson. Kate, thank you so much. I will keep the paper, okay? And I will film the dogs tearing up for you and I'll stick it in after this like segment of the video just so you can see. But that is that is really thoughtful, thank you. Okay, so let's have a look. There sounds like there's quite a few things in here. Whoa, this is... Oh... This is better than subscription box unboxings. Who needs them? Okay. Oh my goodness. These are the the uni uh, the Mitsubishi unicolored pencils. Oh my goodness. Why? Why, Kate? Why? I hope she's taped them down. She has. Okay, good. Uni are the same brand that make Posca pens. They're owned by Mitsubishi. Uh, they also make a multitude of other things as well. Oh, oh look how pretty they are. Okay, I know nothing about these pencils. There's no information on them. So I think what we'll do is, I think we should maybe do a video on these and I'll find out some information about them. We'll do that? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we have some coloured pencils. Kate, that's ridiculous. I know you probably have a lot more coloured pencils than you know what to do with, but that really is an awful lot. Oh my goodness, there's just a little bit of tracing paper. And this is the scroller box pencil paper. I remember this. I don't think I've got any of this left. Yeah, I remember this this scroller box. Carolina Gelfi has an arts and crafts type website and also is a I think she's more of a journaler. So yeah, basically in this scroller box there was there was like sheets of really smooth paper and then there were sheets of really, really textured paper. And uh, it was up to you wh like which one you wanted to use your pencils on. And I really like the textured paper. So, uh, yeah, that's handy to have. Thank you very much, Kate. I appreciate that because I'm always using coloured pencil paper for everything. What's going on? Oh, look at this. Oh, I like this. These must be pre me having a scroller box because I don't recognise any of these and it's all featured artists. So these must have been pre-2018. And this was my first scroller box ever, this one. Wow, thanks very much, Kate. That's nice. I'm going to pin these all up on my pin board. Yeah, I do actually have this one. Uh, I drew... Uh, th this paint was the... They're actually still one of my favourite sets of paints. And they are the Gansai Tambi Starry Colours. That was one of my very first scroller box items. So that's what came with this artwork. But I haven't got any of the rest of these. I love this one and I love this one. Like these two are making me really happy right now. Like super happy. Oh well, that's great. Thanks so much, Kate. That's a look at this, that's amazing. Someone has not done that with coloured pencil. They have. Someone's done that with coloured pencil. That's amazing. So yeah, these are things that I've missed out on, which is really nice. Oh, we've got the Derwent pencils. I have a sneaking suspicion I'll already have these because I do have most of the the Derwent sets. Yeah, a set of graphite tints. I've already got these. These are amazing. These are. I was just talking about these. Um, recently there was a scroller box unboxing, which will be long gone by the time you see this video. And we got some liquid graphite, and it looks like a tube of watercolor. And I said that it looked very like these graphite tint pencils. So I think these will be going into the cave stash for someone who wants them so thank you very much for that as well kate that's amazing some highlighters oh goodness me some highlighters i'm always in need of some highlighters and mr gem always steals mine so yeah that's good i don't know about making an artwork with highlighters i don't really know how i feel about that i was a bit traumatized after the neon pencil escapade but i suppose it's something that we could uh, we could give some thought to okay and this is some more yep some more loose paper 
and lots of loose paper this loose. oh my goodness I have like a stack of paper that I use see for trying out ideas and this is basically what it looks like so uh, and I have none of it left so that there you go I was just saying two minutes ago about not having any watercolour scraps so there you go goodness me a, de <laughs> a Derwent Precision Mechanical Pencil these are good, these are great pencils. These are absolutely fabulous pencils. And this, I like this because, this one in particular because it comes with a pack of lead. You know, you're not just given the lead and the pencil, so that's really cool as well. Oh, I know what this is. This is a Derwent Inkten, Inktense Travel set. And this is the original set. And it doesn't look as if it's been used, wowee. And this is basically like the ink tense blocks, but it's just in a little travel palette. And there's a little travel water brush with it as well. And it's really cool because it's small enough that it fits in here. But this has got a stopper in it. So you put your water in, chuck the stopper in, and then you can take that away with you on your travels. And you can do some ink tense colouring. I used mine a lot in uh, last October for Inktober because I was away for a portion of that as well and I took that with me and it was great for doing that kind of thing so that's really cool as well and there's loads of vibrant colours in this oh yeah and I so scared right okay this is amazing and I am desperate to try this this came in a scroller box before I started getting scroller boxes I think this was maybe a month or two before and it helps you to draw geometric shapes and it's especially good for things like architecture texture so I am really keen to try that out and I would quite like to do an entire drawing with one of these and it says sketch in 3d with confidence so that's really good I'm really pleased about that <laughs> I can't wait to try that out <laughs> a pocket color album a portable catalog of color swatches for your pencil marker and paint collection oh that is so cute look it's even got a table of contents as well oh Okay, this is amazing. I think this might be my favourite item so far. That's really sad, isn't it? <laughs> okay, I need to stop thumbing through it, right? Just stop. This feels like another book in here as well. Or sort of like a notepad or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. What have we got here? Okay, we've got the little scroller box. So Kate's obviously like me and doesn't use these things. Um, there, yeah, this is a little... Um, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. It's little dot squares that are in it. It's more like a like a bullet a bullet journal type notebook. And what is this? I haven't seen this one before. This looks just like this looks like a little sketchbook. And it's actually really cute. I don't even recognise the logo on the back. There's like a little um rooster down here or a cockerel. But that that feels like good quality paper as well. That's not that's not cheap paper that's in that. That's quite interesting. So that's like a little pocket sketchbook as well. Oh, how cute are these? <laughs> I, a a styling bestie journal. Oh, that's so cute. So this looks like a kid's. Yeah, like a, like a little girl's. I could give this to my niece, couldn't I? Colourful fun prompts inside and one for you and one for your bestie. Oh, okay. So you give one to your friend. Well, I could keep one and I could give one to my niece. That would work. And we've got another little notebook here as well. This is super cute as well. <laughs> these are just adorable. Are these little stamps as well? Yeah, I've got these too. Uh, these are, they're really for bullet journaling. They're not for, well, they're supposed they are for art. But I just love them because there's an actual, what looks like a Crayola crayon. Um, there's also the little scroller box logo as well. And this is the little block that you stick them to. And then you can stamp them with ink. So they are really cute, especially if you are a journaling person like me. And this is actually quite good because my uh, my calendar one is like, it's fallen to pieces now. It's just in bits, basically. <laughs> a hobby rotary cutter. Oh, wow. What does this do? For cutting fabric, paper and film, the Rotary 4 provides you with impressive impressive cutting in various hobby and craft work. Oh, so you can like do-do-do-do. Oh, that, right, okay, the original since 1956, well, that, that was a while before I was born. In fact, that was before my dad was born, I'm sure. Maybe? Was my dad born before? Yeah, my dad wasn't even born in 1956. Ooh, so I don't, I'm not really entirely, oh, what, what, what do we do with it? Open. Oh, I don't think that was supposed to happen. Oh, is that so that you can change the blade? 
Ah, right, okay, and then... Oh, oh, I think I broke it. I see it, it's okay, I can see it. I'm gonna get it, I'll, I'll get it, I'll rescue it. Oh. It's under the desk. Oh, hi, Pete, have you come to help me look? No, that's mine. Mine? I got it. <laughs> I think the idea is that you're not supposed to do that. All oh, right, so that's just to stop you cutting yourself on a sort of day-to-day. And then if you do that, you can rotary cut away. Okay, we have to find something to try that on now. <laughs> hmm. I wonder. I've never heard of one of these. How have I not heard of one of these? Oh, this is so adorable. Oh my goodness, this is so adorable as well. And that's really nice textured sketchbook paper too. Kate, did you do this on the front? Or did someone else do this for you? But this is nice, I like this. That's the kind of paper I would draw on, like that's like that's my kind of sketching paper. But again, I don't have any information on it. It feels like recycled paper. It's got a little bit of texture. But that's awesome. Oh, I'm so excited. I've got loads of stuff to draw on and write on. And... Ah, here's the colouring book that Kate was talking about. Oh. Claude Monet, make your own ma art masterpiece. Oh no. Okay. So, I think, oh, it's perforated, it's perforated. Tells you a little bit about Claude Monet, and he was the father of Impressionism, yes, we know. Okay, so they've given you, like, his loose framework, and you can basically just go to town. That is amazing. I think we're going to have to try one of these. I don't, I'm going to have to research this, but I think we're going to try one of these. And I think you're right, Kate, I think we're going to go in watercolour. Oh, maybe do it in gouache. Yeah, I think gouache would be better because if I'm not most mistaken, most mistaken. Most yeah, I'm pretty sure Monet painted in oils. Was it oils? I really don't know much about um about classical art. Uh, but yeah, I I think this is definitely going to be a video. I think we should do that, but I think it should be gouache. We shall, we shall see though, we shall try. Okay, there is lots of paper in the bottom here for the dogs and I found a rogue pencil sharpener as well, thank you. <laughs> this is the little Statler uh, single hole sharpener. I can never have too many sharpeners. Again, Mr. Jim has a habit of wanting to have things that are mine, so that's helpful. Oh, there's a bag of utensils as well, oh my goodness. Right, so we've got lots of paper that's been nice and neatly folded, which is just lovely. Okay, so that, that's basically for the dogs. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll keep that to the side for the for the dogs. Right, what have we got in here? We have got some of the Van Gogh paints. And this is a little watercolour tubes. Uh, Prussian blue, cerulean blue, or cerulean blue. Permanent lemon yellow. Now, interestingly... I don't have these colours, so that's a really nice addition to what I already have, and I'm amazing that that's actually happened and I don't own these colours. Yeah, I'm going to add that to my repertoire. I'm thinking as well that in the next little while I'm going to have to do a video on just my watercolours and show you what I've got and what they are kind of thing. If that's something you would be interested in, please let me know in the comments. Because that's one of those ideas that I think might be a great idea and that might actually be completely and utterly boring. So I would be happy to hear from you on that front. And uh, let's, I've kind of swamped under paper now. Here's my, oh, here's my watercolour paper from earlier. I just want to test out these colours and see what they look like. I'm not keen on these paints straight from the tube. I do prefer to put them into a palette squish them about in a palette, let them dry and then use them from the palette. That that seems to work better for me. I just find them a lot less mobile and a lot less cooperative straight out the tube. But the colours are very, very vibrant. Oh, we're just, we're just, yeah. This wants to go in a pan already. already. Oh, would you look. Ah, now this paint has split in the tube. Let's just see if we can rescue this at all. 
I don't know why, but there seems to be shades of blue that do this, and I don't know why they do it, but they just do. And it's um because I, I have a schminke paint that's done exactly the same thing, and I don't know why it's just that it just has. Uh, yes, I've got myself a little cocktail stick here, and I'm just going to give that a bit of a mix together in there, and try and blend that colour back together a bit, which it seems to be doing. It seems to be okay. If I take my brush now. There you go. So you can see the difference between this and this. And this is the one that's been mixed properly and this one hasn't. I am literally just going to start calling these videos um, watercolour testing videos instead of whole videos. Oh, that is really deep and dark. Oh my goodness, that's nice. Oh yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, look at this. 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 Oh. I love dark blues like I love them uh, okay we've got the Statler Mars Lumograph Aquarelle in a 4B these pencils are awesome and if you're ever looking for some water soluble graphite this is your bad boy right here like this is the one that you want so uh, yeah I'm gonna put that in the cave stash as well because I've already got one of those right what else have we got in here we have got a number two zebra pencil which is just like an HB pencil it's quite a diddly little pencil though uh, and it looks as if it's a, it is, it's a mechanical pencil, but it's made to look like a not mechanical pencil. That's really cute. I like that. Ah, I like that. Novelty value, novelty value. What else have we got? Uh, a Statler HB All X right, and that's just a sheer graphite. There's no wood. That's a, it's a woodless pencil, so you can use it on its side like this. Oh yeah, you can, you could actually just like. <laughs> got an eraser on it Ooh, erases pretty well and this is a Derwent Graphic HB as well I use Derwent Graphic pencils all the time these are my sketching pencil of choice and there's a few reasons for it sometimes I do use a mechanical pencil not always number one they are hexagonal and I find them much easier on my poor knackered hand and uh, number two they're quite cheap <laughs> I just like them. I've, I've always used them. They were one of the first brands of drawing pencils that I tried, apart from Statler pencils. And funnily enough, I've stuck with those two brands as my, like, my mainstay. So uh, yeah, that'll get chewed up in absolutely no time. I use these a lot. Okay, we have paintbrushes. Oh no, hang on, there's another pencil as well. Uh, this is the, uh, the Faber-Castell Aquarelle uh, water soluble pencil so this is a 2B. I haven't used the Faber-Castell ones extensively. I did use uh, the one that was given to us in a scroller box. I think it might have been the 2B uh, as far as I know they're good pencils. Again I've used Faber-Castell sketching pencils up till now with absolutely no problems. They're a really solid good quality brand so that's just another one to add to the collection and a 2B is a sketching pencil that I use a lot so I, I eat those things so that I'll just add that one to the the collection shall I? Okay, there we've got a novelty pen and with a football top and it yes the pen works and it's black, okay. I don't really know what I would do with that. I must I'm assuming it's supposed to be like sports themed. Um I shall keep this in my pencil pocket and I can guarantee that that's one of the ones that Mr. Jem will try and steal and I will not let him. I will not let him. Uh, I see white number twelve. Ooh, that's nice. I don't have one of these, do I? I don't think I've got one of these. Uh, and I see white number two and uh, yeah these are the synthetic bristle ones which I quite like oh, it was a number six so that's a number two they're all from the same family look oh that's so cute uh, yeah so that's a number two and a number 12 synthetic I'm really interested to try this out because I tried uh, some of the sea white natural bristle brushes and I didn't like them weirdly though when we got this one in a recent subscription box I really like this one and it's the same synthetic bristles these white bristles and I got on a lot better with that so the fact that I've now got a number two and a number 12 is amazing now I have that many new paint brushes that come in all the time that I actually have a separate jar now these are just for watercolour brushes this isn't acrylic brushes this is a pot of brushes that I haven't tested extensively. So 
and that's so that I don't lose any and like none go missing or I forget about them. So okay, I'm going to pop your brushes in here so that I remember to test them out. I am going to be doing a paintbrush testing video. Again, I think you guys will probably have seen it by the time this comes out. Because um, there is a lot of brushes there that I haven't really had full use of. So thank you very much for that. That is amazing. Right, we're getting there. We're getting there. Oh my, this is a this is a wink of Luna brush. This has not been used. I did have one of these and I actually used the entire thing. And it's basically like a metallic um water brush. It's, it's, it's like a water brush. Right, yeah. It's like a water brush, but it's full of metallic ink, basically, and it looks a little bit like a mascara. I'm perfectly aware of that. Uh these are these are great. You get them in all different colours. You get the wink of Luna ones or the metallic ones, and you get a, a wink of Stella, which is the glittery ones. Uh, this is a lovely shade of green as well. It's really, really nice. I don't want to open it. See how it's got this black ring on it? If you want to start using it, you have to unscrew this and you take the, that black ring off and then you screw it back on and that allows the the ink to start flowing through the bar barrel and into the tip. I'm going to leave that entire and uh, we'll put that in the stash for somebody because they're really, really good. I love them. Um, again, I've got a video where I've used that and I think I was that was probably my first actual scroller box video. Do you know I've got over 350 videos on my channel? That I think that's quite scary. A little Faber Castell water brush. These are, uh, I never really found out what the point in this part was, but uh, these are fairly good water brushes. I have more water brushes than I can shake a stick at though. Um, so yeah, but the, this is uh, not bad control wise. I've, I've had worse, I've had a lot worse. I would recommend these, but you do have to be careful when you're squeezing. Okay. Statler Mars Plastic Eraser. Excellent erasers. I love these. And last but not least, there, there is a set of Pigma Micron Fine Liners minus the 08, which is a size that I don't use anyway. And these are black ones, I'm assuming. Yep. And we have varying sizes. Now, the thing with the Pigma Microns is that the sizes on the cat is like a numbering system. It's not the actual nib width. And people get confused with that all the time. Again, I'm just going to use a little corner of my paper here to show you. Oh no, the 08 is there. What one's missing? 05. Okay, so a 08 is actually a, is like a 0.5 millimetre line width. So that is what I would call the chunky monkey. Let's zoom in a wee bit. So that's the 08. That's great for if you've done like an illustrative piece and you want a, like, a, like an outline to make something pop. That pen is great for that. The next one down is the 05, which we don't have. We've got a 03, and this is a 0.35 millimetre line width. A, a 03 is really the biggest fine liner that I would use. That's, uh, that's more getting towards what I would like to use. A 02, which is a, a 0.3 millimetre line width. Now we're getting into my territory. And they just get finer and finer. Um, we've got a 01, which is a 0.25 millimeter line width much better much better i do like really fine lines though uh, we also have a pn which stands for plastic nib and they remind me of the old uh beetle hand beetle handwriting pens see because i've made the camera i don't know where i'm going <laughs> uh they look a little bit like that i don't know if any of you remember them they've got like this this plastic fiber nib on them uh, I don't really like them for art, but they're really good for just writing stuff down. And again, I did have one of these, but I think I think I've actually used it. Like I think it's dried out. Wow, <laughs> this is just insane. I I really don't know. Um... Kate, okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad you've included your address in your letter i am going to send you something in the post as a thank you because this is an awful lot of stuff like it really is an awful lot of stuff um so i, I um yeah that's really really generous of you it's really generous thank you so so much you you have a good heart my friend a good heart and uh, for the items that i can't put to use i will put in the stash and hopefully someone else will be able to get some use out of them I just feel very, very lucky to have all of you. I really do.
Okay, uh, <laughs> I'm going to get this lot cleared up so that we can move on to the next item. Thank you again, Kate, very, very much. What is this? Oh, any... Get it, oh, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh, get it, get it. Uh, uh. Go, Peppy. Go, Peppy. I was expecting an Amazon package today, but I actually got a little surprise. Um, it wasn't just something that I'd ordered, but I also got something from one of my Amazon fairies. So one of you out there have been busy snooping on my Amazon wish list. If anyone is interested, I have a link to my Amazon wish list down in the description. And the initial intention of it was so that other people could go in and get some inspiration. Maybe if they just had a hankering to buy themselves something nice you know, that's arty. Um, and inadvertently, some of you are very kind and every now and then send me things. So that's included in this package. So the first thing that's in here is what I was expecting. And uh, it's not that exciting, but it is kind of exciting. And that is Intricate Ink Volume 2 by Tim Jeffs. Now, I did actually own this book and it got water damaged when we moved. Thankfully I hadn't coloured in it but it just wasn't rescuable so I've got myself another copy now and for those of you that watch regularly you will know that I'm a huge fan of Tim Jeffs and his artwork, he's such a talented artist and I aspire to be able to draw animals like him but I don't think I've got the patience to be perfectly honest. So these are grayscale images and they're all realistic drawings. And Tim sort of brought them together in a collection. And I love these books because they've all got black backgrounds. Look at these giraffes. They're just adorable. They're absolutely adorable. I just love them. <laughs> so I just wanted to give you a wee quick flick through this to see what kind of thing we're talking about. And there's usually quite a variety. You know, there's a good mix of fish, birds and mammals. So you can see here, uh, there's, sometimes there's one or two different poses with the animals as well. It just gives you a really nice variety of things to colour. One of the reasons I like to colour these is I'm quite often very pushed for time and you can colour in one of these images fairly quickly and get some absolutely fabulous results and that's kind of the appeal of the colouring side of it for me. Obviously uh, I tend to buy books because I like the artwork and not because I want to colour in them. There's one in here, I think it's further on, I find my favourite one to show you. Apart from the giraffes, I have to admit, like, that's one of my favourites. But there's another one further back. Here he is. <laughs> Look at the face. It's the face. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> this is my favourite one in the whole book, and I never I never got around to colouring in the last book, so I'm really excited for this as well. Some reptiles as well. So all in all, an absolutely fabulous book. This is readily available from Amazon and Mr. Jeffs also sells PDFs on his Etsy store, which again, I'll leave a link in the description for. Okay, so on to the other stuff. This is where I got a surprise. Now there was a note that came with this. Um, when people, I don't know if you've ever done it before, but if you receive a gift from Amazon from someone else, they always put a little note in it. I found it. <laughs> And this little note says, a gift note from Siri, or Siri, I don't know how you pronounce your name because everyone pronounces it differently. And the note says, enjoy your gift from rural Aberdeenshire, which isn't all that far away from where I am now. And I used to live in rural Aberdeenshire. Uh, I enjoy your channel, extremely calming and enjoy the chat about rich tea biscuits <laughs> from Siri. Okay, the rich tea biscuits thing. I've started a new colour in chat um, as I'm filming this. Obviously, you're going to see this a lot later. But at the time, I just started the colour in chat for the ink house. And in the book, the first page that I coloured was a hermit crab that was holding onto a rich tea biscuit. And uh, yes, it's a rich tea biscuit's a very British thing. Um, so I'm glad you enjoyed that, Siri. That's fun. Now, on to what she has sent me. Dun, dun, dun! As I said, all these items are on my wish list, so they're things that I would really want. And I was absolutely desperate to get hold of this book, which is the Coloured Pencil Painting Bible. And it's basically a book of techniques. Um, there is a bit of theory behind it as well. But the thing that really attracted me about this book is it's in these sort of little chapter chunks. But at the back, there's a whole load of tutorial exercises and they're step by step. And that really, really appeals to me. So I'm really looking forward to trying some of these. 
There we go, exercise four, one peach and a juicy half. And she literally takes you through every single step. And you can see here, like building up the layers as we go. I'm always banging on about building up layers of pencil. So I really want to use this to sharpen up my skills and maybe pick up a little bit on the technical theory that I don't have because obviously I am self-taught. I have no art qualifications or art background at all. I've just had fun doing this and learned stuff as I went along. So I really wanted to get a book like this to help underpin my sort of technical knowledge. Um, and I think this is just going to do the job beautifully. Plus as well, I like to draw things in coloured pencil. And it's something that I tend to keep for myself. I don't do a huge amount of it on the channel other than colouring and colouring books. So if you would like to maybe see part of one of these exercises as a separate video, you can let me know down in the comments section. And the other thing that she sent me made me chuckle as well. And uh, this is uh, not technically an art supply per se, but I suppose it is. And this is a sort of, a, it's a little uh, wooden unit. I already have one similar to, similar to this and it looks like this. Uh, this one is basically the same sort of thing, but it's got more pencil spaces in it. And I'm just, oh. I'm at the stage where I get really sick of raking in pencil cases for things and I want my pencils all out in front of me. So it's the same as the one I've got minus the drawer. So you've just got more what we would call with a, with a Scottish word ducats, you know, like a cubby hole or a, a partitioned area for certain things. Like a pigeon hole except smaller, a ducat. That's D-O-O-K-I-T if you're interested. <laughs> So, and you get these deadly little screwdrivers with them as well, which are really helpful for other stuff as well. I've already got one of these. The other thing that they give you as well is a wee stand, and I think it's supposed to be for your mobile phone, you know, so you can sit and watch things in landscape mode. I like them because I, um, it looks like a rabbit to start with, which is quite cute, but I like it to put my artworks in, you know, when I'm, when I'm finished drawing something, I like to sit it out for a week or two, and I've got this sort of, um, out of use fireplace over here and I just kind of like use the mantelpiece as my, my sort of place to put my artwork so I'm going to pop that up there so I can stick my art on it as well. I'm going to put this together and I'm going to show you it when it's finished. There we go, all ready to go. Stick some stuff in it in a little while. That one's going on that side. Oh yeah. So I've been trying to find some time to get to my PO box, but because of harvest, it's been really, really difficult and I've been just struggling to slot everything in. I did know both these packages were coming, so I was having to go down anyway. Uh, that My PO box is also my print shop and I was getting some art prints done, which are now in the stash shop. You'll already know about them. I'll leave the link down in the description if you fancy taking a look. So this is from my serial commenter and it feels like, oh yes, yes, what's this? Oh, oh, I know this place. I know this is in Sky. That I'm sure this is in Sky. Stonebridge across Sligacan River, Isle of Sky. Yes, I have been here. I have been here and it is absolutely gorgeous. This is, this is amazing. Oh, Daria, I love this. This is, this is definitely going up on the wall. From Beautiful Nature by Nicole Stalker, coloured by Daria. Yeah. Okay, let's see what she's saying. Hi, Gem. I'm watching the Aberdeen Standard Investments Ladies Scottish Open on television as I write this. That's golf for anyone who's interested. How's that for a little coincidence? I've been eyeing this page in the Beautiful Nature colouring book by Nicole Stalker for some time. I always knew that I would ultimately tackle it because it is a book I fully intend to complete. Oh, good to do like a little bit of ambition. Once I started searching for some reference photos, I stumbled, stumbled across a plethora of images of this exact stone bridge. Yeah, it's on a lot of postcards and things, this bridge. 
Imagine my surprise to discover that it's located in Scotland. That immediately piqued my interest, so I printed off a copy of the page to colour for you. It didn't turn out particularly exciting, but I'm happy with it. Here's hoping you get a kick out of it. Cheers, Daria. I absolutely do because I've been there. Sky is amazing and it's quite um quite a, a popular tourist spot for people who are holidaying inside Scotland. Uh, it's, a, it's a fair drive as well unless you stay you know obviously in the vicinity but it's it's a very scenic route and it's a very nice place to visit and I, I love going to Sky. I haven't been for quite some time. This is amazing and uh, thank you very much Daria. That's really made me smile. It's always nice when you get something like this and you recognise where it is. Oh, that is so cool. Well, that can go up on the wall in the cave. Now, this other parcel is from Linda. And she had asked me to contact her, which obviously I will after I've opened this to let her know it got here. Again, I have no idea what this is. Uh, Linda Linda is, um, she's a Scot. She's a fellow Scot. She's part of the Tart and Army. Oh, 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 look. Oh, goodies. Oh, this is like a whole little kit. Goodness. So we've got, oh my goodness. Oh, look at this. This is amazing. Sticky tabs, and there are animals, and there's giraffes in there. The only way that could have been any better is if there was llamas, but I'll take giraffes every day of the week. Kit's <laughs> mouth open. <laughs> That's brilliant. Oh wow, these are so cool. So these are like index stickers, you know, you can use them to mark pages. I use them in colouring books all the time, so that is really helpful. That's amazing. Oh, what else? We've got a little seahorse notepad as well. Oh, that's adorable. That is, ad I've actually got a use for that straight away. I need to keep track of uh, Jock's medication and his weight. So that would be perfect for that. Oh, this is amazing. Oh. A little set of playing cards. Look, look at the pattern on them, though. Oh, they've got like a leaf pattern on them. I hope you can see that. Oh, these are amazing. I think I might have a use for these as well. A little travel pack of playing cards. Spectrum Noir Classic markers in henna and lavender. Oh, wow, look at all this stuff. Post-it notes. I am a huge um, post-it note geek, so... Linda, I don't know if you've been listening or you just <laughs> you had really flicked out at that one, but I'd go through post it notes like they're going out of fashion. A wildlife colouring pad. Oh, this is it's got a little magnetic clasp on it. It's so pretty. Look, it's so colourful. And it's a giraffe. <laughs> it's a giraffe. We're all about the giraffes just now. Oh, these are really nice as well. And do you know something? This is really, really thoughtful. I struggle to find time, you know, like to colour sometimes and it's usually only a little snippet on the little window and these would be perfect for that because you could colour one of these in, I'd say probably in under an hour, no problem, and you would have a finished piece. That is lovely. Beautiful letters to colour and share. Oh, I love these books as well. I've got a really big one of these. Um, it's like yay big. This looks like a smaller version. I'll look at some of these. Oh, these are lovely. Oh, 2D. So we've got more of some letters. I would imagine the more frequently used letters, like the vowels, E. Oh, there. well, there's G for gem. That's cool. What about C for cave? C for cave. Did we miss the Cs? Have we only got one? Oh, we've only got one C. That's really pretty, though. This is a lovely little book. I wonder if we can... Yeah, and they're perforated as well so that you can tear them out. That is so awesome. Oh, these are so nice. The paper looks really good as well. It's thick paper. That's really good quality. Oh, that's amazing. It's a boy. <laughs> oh my God. Linda, thank you so much. This is amazing. I'm going to read the letter now. Let's see what it says. A oh, Winnie Babbitts. Oh, dear Jem, thought I would write you a wee letter from Linda. Oh, Okay, let's see what it says. Dear Jem, been following you for a while now and I just love your content. It has inspired me to try markers. Well, that's interesting, but okay. I have bought some watercolour paints as well. I love hearing you talk about your family, animals and farm life. Whenever I look at new supplies, I think to myself, I wonder if you have tried it or had it. It would be great if we could meet up sometime if you're down this neck of the woods and would love to have the chance to paint, draw or do something creative with you. P.S. I have put a wee gift together for you. Hope you like. Mini cards. I would love to see some mini paintings. 
green sticky notes. I remembered you love green. I do also love green, but I do also love post-it notes. Animal tabs to mark pages so you don't forget, which is amazing. Mini notebook to have in my pocket to have in pocket for when inspiration strikes. Two Spectrum Noir classic markers. Both have fine and chisel nibs and they can also be refilled. Wildlife colouring pad and from A to Z beautiful letters. I have three copies for different mediums. Thought you'd like a copy too. Yours sincerely from Linda. Linda, that is amazing. That is so nice and so thoughtful of you as well. I haven't tried the Spectrum Noir markers. I had a set of the, um, what were they called? The tri-blend ones. And I used them in a scroller challenge. And I appreciate the fact that you've given me two colours that can be used together. So maybe we could do a little bit of marker colouring and try these out. That would be good. I've got some really nice marker paper that I haven't tried yet as well. So we could maybe kill two birds with one stone and do those together. This is just a lovely little set of uh, bits and pieces. And I really, really appreciate this. This is lovely. And the great thing about it is I'm going to use most of this, if not all of it, which is always the coolest thing ever. So Linda, thank you ever so much. That is brilliant. Right, guys, that is it for this haul video. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed uh, perusing my wares with me and we shall see you back in the cave really soon for another video. So have a great day, everyone. Take care and bye for now.